there's two kinds of travelers in this world. Relaxed and frazzled. Being frazzled in a car sucks. Frazzled in an airplane can be deadly. The difference between enjoying flying and being miserable is preparation. My frazzle-free flying strategy is to do all my prep before the big day. Fuel is topped off, windshield is clean, bags are packed. Wake up fresh, grab coffee, enjoy the sunrise and wildlife on my way to the airport. My plane is in front, plenty of time for a solid pre-flight. Watch a couple planes land, and then we're climbing away into the brisk morning air. Good morning. <laughs> Our destination today is a secret backcountry airport at the gateway to Glacier National Park called Ryan Field. A few friends and I did a work party here recently, mowing lawns, trimming trees, and stacking firewood. This weekend, work is forbidden. This annual fly-in is all about laughing, eating, making new friends, and creating memories. Just kind of simulate the takeoff that's going to happen at Ryan Field when we depart there. So it's going to feel like pretty atypical. We're going to basically simulate a short and soft field takeoff. VMs and oil pressure in the green. Airspeed's alive. an overfly on the runway. I am listening uh, very intently for traffic because this is a fly-in and so uh, it's possible some of that departing traffic from glaciers coming over here. Ryan, traffic, uh, copy. Roger that. Uh, field is clear, winds are calm and using one six landing to the south so you can just come straight in if you want to. Ryan field traffic, Skyline 5237, turning left base one six, Ryan. traditional approach. <laughs> Check out that guy's tent. Ah, it's a wing tent. Nice. Pretty speed, eh? All right, radios are going off. Guys, we made it. And if I'm correct, I believe breakfast should be waiting for us, or I really hope so. It sounds like it's a, it was a good decision not to come last night. It rained, they said, from eight o'clock to midnight, and that just sounds miserable. So hopefully that doesn't happen to us today. And I know that Jess and I are both really hungry. I don't know. Six twenty-nine. A couple people have been here. Oh, let me go that. What in the world? Huckleberries. You want plain? Plain. I'm making plain ones too. Huckleberry sounds amazing. Okay. I would never turn down a good huckleberry. <laughs> I 
I wasn't sure if I was going to get breakfast done between all the wonderful friendly people that are here and all the airplanes that are taking off and landing. You can't help but watch. It's kind of a spectator sport a little bit. In fact, we joke that around here you don't get to do a takeoff where people don't pay attention. Everybody's, everybody's watching. They're watching your landings, they're watching your takeoff, so, and they're all pilots to help. All right, I'm standing right here. I know where I landed. Uh, the camera running? <laughs> yeah, actually, I am standing next to a guy taking a video. <laughs> no pressure, though. No pressure. Well, I think a group of people are going to do some horseback riding and um, there's another group that's going to do something else. So I think it's time to socialize, kind of meet some people, shake some hands, build some relationships and try to enjoy this beautiful day. Well, how many people were here last night? Not nearly this many. Probably 50. Oh, yeah. so quite a few. Yeah. Yeah, knowing that most of these airports are an hour, you know, yeah. it's a pretty short flight. That's I mean, right. today's flight was pretty short. Would you yeah. agree? I mean, 50 minutes. Yeah, 50 minutes. Well, so far, met people from all over the country, which was to be expected. This strip that we're at is a pretty unique place. It was actually donated by a gentleman and his wife to this organization that is put together for the sole purpose of preserving airstrips for private use or for public use. A lot of these airstrips are being threatened and they there's a lot of a lot of forces out there that want to remove them from use. Maybe not this one in particular, but the fact is maintaining an airport takes a tremendous amount of effort. And this organization has basically recruited volunteers. People have stepped up to administrate it and they're always recruiting and they're looking for people who want to work to preserve this stuff. And the reality is that the generation that kind of made aviation what it is, they're all going away. Eventually, we don't like the idea, but it's real. So it's kind of left to us to maintain a lot of this stuff. A lot of us younger pilots, you know, we haven't enjoyed this stuff to the degree that these people have, but the torch is being passed and these organizations need help. And I was very fortunate to get to come over here and enjoy this field um, recently and do a work party, maintain the airport. We sanded picnic tables, we trimmed trees, we cut firewood. Uh, mowed grass, did a lot of stuff, had a lot of really great people come over and the airstrip has a lot more meaning because of that. It's not just something that you go visit like a shopping mall, but it's kind of a, a special place. This airport has a campground, a pilot shelter, cook stove, running water, pit toilet, a shower facility. So it's not just a place to land your airplane or to do touch and goes. It's a place to actually enjoy with your family and that's what I'm seeing here is a lot of families not just a bunch of old guys in their airplanes but wives husbands kids grandparents and people from all over the country so being here today it's super special looks like a glass in there, no? How fun is this? So the rumor is he built one of these from a model. He literally measured the model because there was no plans available and he knew the model was fairly true to the original. That's incredible. This looks like a little two cylinder engine. Look at this little propeller. This thing is adorable. <laughs> Held on by three bolts. Looks like half of a Volkswagen motor. That's what, you know what? That actually may be what it is. Yeah, and it's got a one exhaust per cylinder. That probably, uh, yeah. that probably goes right on the carburetor. Yep. That cowling looks a lot easier to remove than mine, that's for sure. Yeah. A couple less bolts. This is a two-seater. Look at that headset. Bose Eat Your Heart Out. The original noise canceling. The gentleman who actually donated this airstrip to the RAF was a P-38 pilot in World War II. 
and he had a strong aviation background. So he spent his spare time between building the house and the airstrip, he actually built airplanes for fun. And even though he's now passed away, deceased, uh, these airplanes are still here and they're kind of kept more like a museum. In fact, this whole airstrip in a way is kind of a museum to this gentleman and his wife. Uh, they're just really good people and they were very um, compelled to keep this airstrip alive, even though it was built kind of as a, uh, like a realization one day that they had room to do this and it was more of a grassroots effort. It's been taken over by the RAF and they've worked really hard to improve it and to uh, sustain it so that a it's more it's usable into the future but more people can come here and kind of learn the history of this family and the airstrip For a sawmill. Does anybody see a sawmill? Oh, that's looking like a sawmill. There's a dozer. Yeah, look at all this lumber. That looks kind of familiar, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's a circular sawmill. So all the buildings around here and even the pilot shelter were built with lumber made on this sawmill. And I believe it's from lumber that was from clearing for the runway. Yeah. In fact, that's when it became obvious that they had a runway there is when they started clearing all the trees. So there's a drive shaft there. And it looks like maybe there's a dozer behind that wall that might provide the power for that blade. Yeah, it, it goes all the way through this building all the way into that dozer. Really? Yeah. No. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Sure enough. Look at that. That's a PTO. Yeah. If I've ever seen a PTO. <laughs> wow. I feel like with a place as special as this, you really can't appreciate it without understanding what it took to make it. In preserving a lot of these things, um, I feel like they're trying to add value. Something that the people who watch our channel will understand is so many things today have just become a thing. I guess that's the best way I can explain it. Um, when you go places, you're, you're just there as a tourist. And you go, you buy the, the gift card or you buy the postcard, you buy the t-shirt, you do the thing, you take the ride, you get the selfie, you do those things. And there's really no sentimental value and there's no deeper connection to the experience. And this kind of creates that detachment that is a bit of a plague with people. As they come, they're disrespectful, they, ex they complain that things take a long time, the service isn't good, it costs too much money. Whereas this type of an experience, it does take a different kind of person to appreciate it, but it's, it's not just a piece of beautifully maintained grass up in the mountains near Glacier National Park. You know, this really represents someone's lifetime. And I think with all the work that Alyssa and I have done and with the, with the people who have helped us, we can appreciate that. Um, it's, it's something that just takes a tremendous amount of effort and it's not something that happens quickly. This whole process represents uh, an entire person's lifetime. Really stop and think about that for a while. So when you visit a place, think about the history and what it took to make it what it is. Look at this boneyard. I'm like a little jealous. I mean, look at all this lumber that's laying around. Build a half a house with the lips. Yeah, look at this. And it's all protected. I think as somebody who's run a sawmill, I can appreciate this. I can appreciate having the material to build with. I can appreciate that there's still bark on all this lumber. You know, it's not the stuff that you buy at the lumber store. Just looking at it with my eyeball, that's not nominal lumber. That's true lumber. That's a true two inch lumber. And so the engineering on these buildings probably isn't very well engineered, but at the same time, they're all probably plenty strong and they're gonna last a long time. I mean, they, they're in snow country and they've been here for a long time. I don't think they're going anywhere. Look at that distributor cap. It must go pop, 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 pop. It's a four place with only two, two plugs. Well, it both, they're yeah. not opposites. True, it yeah. Be, bun, dum, bun, dum, bun, dum, bun, dum. But it's going yeah. pop, pop, pop. But it only has to do it really slowly to make good good wood off the sawmill. Yeah. Is it really dumb to stand here? No, you're fine. It doesn't hurt like a horseshoe. <laughs>
<laughs> Looks like your beer's no good. Party foul. Negative one. Oh, nice. Dirty. Yeah. What's this called again? Cornhole. cornhole. That. About to play cornhole. Is there like a dozen names for this game? Yeah, no. but the correct one is cornhole. You're only gonna So like if I Google this and I go to Wikipedia, cornhole is what's gonna show up. Are you taping right now? Yeah, I am. I won't say anything that I won't. Oh no, you can say whatever you want. You'll this is thing it called out. yeah, this thing called editing. Because lots of people say stuff that can't be put in videos. Potty mouths, balls, <laughs> balls. <laughs> That'd be one of them. So what color are we? You are yellow. I'm yellow. Okay, whoever's editing this. Blame it on those guys. <laughs> it's their fault. Garrett from Missoula. Here, we'll, we'll put his Facebook down there and you can troll him. Only women. Only women, yeah. He's single. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's my team. <laughs> Ooh, dirty. I don't even know what the goal is other than to throw it in the hole. So you want to get it on the stop on the panel or in the hole. Okay. This is a hanger. This is where okay. two. These two cancel each other out. Oh, okay. This is where two. This one cancels one of the two, so you guys got one point. So okay. you're ahead, you go first. What could go wrong? <sighs> I could do two things at once. I'm a pilot. <laughs> Granny toss. So the trick is, is arc. So it's like landing a, it's like a short field landing versus just landing on a runway. Gotcha. Want you want you want down. a steep approach. Oh wow! Somebody knocked that in. Thank you. We share Ryan Field and many backcountry airstrips with the mighty grizzly bear. Wow! Wow! To help prevent encounters and learn what to do if you're threatened, biologists from the Forest Service educated us on their population, range, and behavior patterns. It wouldn't have been a proper presentation without a demonstration. Looks like we're gonna learn how to use pepper spray, or bear spray, more appropriately, not pepper. So, oh, no. You know, most bears, when they bears charge, they're on all four. You know, people think of a bear stands up on its hind legs, it's going to charge. They don't charge you when they're standing on their hind legs. <laughs> yeah. They're trying to get a better view or better look. Mm -hmm. And so if a bear's going to charge, it's going to be on all fours. Usually the head's fairly low, ears are back when it's coming towards you. And they can run very fast, but usually what happens is they'll kind of make a false charge, turn, go back, no. see how their cubs are doing, no. turn around and come again. And that's usually, you know, when people end up spraying. So that's basically how far it's going to go. Give you that. Yeah, comes out pretty hard and pretty fast. Yeah. Oh, fun. Take the safety off. Okay. Shoot from the hip. Okay. Hold your camera. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a lot of force. That's pretty impressive. I think you got him. That's enough. I'm glad it's not full of pepper spray. <laughs> yeah, the way this wind's going, can you yeah. imagine? Everybody enjoyed that. I think it was very insightful. A lot of great questions. Um, I think there's a lot of information out there about these animals and the recovery uh, of their habitat and of them as a species. Great information. Uh, I think everybody kind of has that really hungry look. And I, had, I heard a rumor that it's taco night and I think there's huckleberry ice cream sandwiches. Yeah! I am grumpy old man. I do what I want, when I want, where I want. Except I gotta ask my wife. Okay, here you go, Michael. Justin, do you want a beer? Right I said, do you want a beer? What's on the menu? All right, man, uh, ground beef or pulled pork tacos. Pulled pork. Well, one or two. Sold. Two. Okay. Four for four. You missed out last night on the sirloin steak. I did hear I heard I lost out on the steak. I'm yeah. sad about that. So this is second wow. I normally don't do this. Thank you. Enjoy. What's this? It's rabbit food. Lechuga. <laughs> there must be women around here.
thanks to these two guys and their grandfather, we have a tractor that we get to use to mow the lawn. Nice. Otherwise, that would be a very different experience landing on this airship. Yeah, so, hey, Chuck, Chuck, I know you're tired of this. But you know, I've heard your damn speech too many times. I don't know. <laughs> I only want to hear one thing, that there's still huckleberry ice cream sandwiches. Well, I don't know about that. You have to talk to Mike. No! Yeah. I'm going in. <laughs> if I don't come back. It's good knowing you, Josh. Good knowing you. I'll see you on the other side. Mike. Mike. Can I have one? Thank you. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. I didn't miss out. Thank you. Huckleberry. So John shared something really powerful with me that I think will resonate with the right people. I was sharing with you how after learning to fly, I realized that learning to fly an airplane is nothing really. You need to become a pilot and that involves so much more than just flying an airplane. But you kind of opened my mind by saying then what? Well, and I think that I think that learning to be a pilot is is the mechanical part of the, the equation. Learning to uh, be um, going beyond that is becoming an aviator. And then beyond that is the sense of community. Yep. Uh, it's the sense of community that really ties it all together. What is it that you want to do once you've got your pilot's license? Right. Uh, do you have an Do you have an objective? Yeah. And because trust me, after you've bought about five of your friends, that yep. not even hundred dollar hamburger, more than yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then what? Now what? Now what? And so you need to answer the now what? Yeah. And uh, for me, the now what has been being out in the back country, being yep. with friends, and being a part of really paying it forward. And yeah. that, that's meant more to me, or as much, as being a pilot. The airplane is truly just a tool. It's an access tool. It allows you to see the world from such a very different perspective. Yeah. And what I found is that commonality that comes yeah. from people who, who finally get beyond getting their pilot's license and somewhat have a deeper, a deeper connection to it. And that's aviation. And that's aviation. That really took my mind to a new place because I've got the pilot and I've got the airplane, but I don't really have the now what. And here I am at Ryan Field with all you guys. I feel like I'm the outsider. I'm the new guy here. And I'm enjoying this. And I feel like I've walked into this community that's been growing for 15 years and enjoying a strip that's been under development for longer than that. And I'm benefiting from it and I feel it. And that's like, that's the now what. And the now what for somebody like myself or a gentleman like Chuck Turecki who just yeah. left who was 82 years old, yeah. the now what is uh it's it's you that's it um, and we're what's next we're what's next and yeah. if there's no what's next then there's no now what there's no now what it's yeah. the end <laughs> we're all the end of an era it is yeah and, and we don't want that Have a good flight. Clear.
Lionfield traffic, Skylark 585, pop the mic, departing 16, Lionfield. Safe flight, guys. Thanks, see ya. You guys all have a safe flight. We'll see you soon. Yeah, thanks, John. Thank you, John. See you. Pretty soon. one and then we're out of here. Justin was hungry about three hours ago, but he's been manning up and hasn't said a word, but I have a hunch when we sit down and I offer to buy breakfast, he's not gonna hold back, if you know what I mean. Clear prop. in Glacier if you're not in a hurry to get home or we can just go ahead and go home. Either way, it don't matter. It doesn't matter to me. Whatever you want okay. to do. Let's do that. We'll land there, tie down, go get a bite to eat, and then we'll go home. Okay. Ryan Field, Skyline 5237, departing runway 16. We'll be headed to the west. Ryan. By the way, what's the name of your channel? Pure Living for Life. I'll be checking you out. Hey, nice meeting you this weekend, Jesse, and uh, you have a safe trip. Hey, you too. Take care. Thanks a bunch. Kalispell City, Skyline 5237, turning left base 31. Kalispell. City. Oh, it's a beautiful place. Oh, there's tie downs here. We'll just tie down on this far one because we can just walk over there to the top light, take a right, and there's a kind of a bar there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't breakfast. No. It wasn't too bad. <laughs> a bit of a hike. So this is an airport where a lot of aircraft would actually back taxi because the taxiways are so narrow. So the wingspan of most aircraft wouldn't be able to fit through here, so they actually back taxi on the runway. Oh. Kalispell City traffic, Skyline number 52337, we'll be taking runway 31, we'll be departing to the west, Kalispell City. I don't see anybody down there, runway's clear down here. Yep. Kalispell City, Skyline 52337, departing runway 31, we'll be making a left turn to the west, Kalispell. bit windy today, huh? Uh, getting there. The winds are picking up for sure. We're just getting lots of, lots of sun and lots of convection and wind. And... I'm gonna try to look at your house real quick as we go by. Yeah, let's see what we're doing. It'll be on your right side. There's the house. Got it. Yep. All right, fuel is set to both. Cow flaps are closed. We're full rich. Let's go high RPM. Story time is over. <laughs> well, we live to tell about it. I think that's.
that's always a good sign. Heck yeah. I have even had some good, good fun, but we wouldn't tell anybody about that. We'll keep that our little... All this asphalt business, all this pavement. <laughs> Guys, 